from massive magnets being delivered piece by piece, to parts of infrastructure being taken to their final resting places and more. Here are nine of the most epic shipping and transport operations. Number nine, Muon G2 Magnet. This transportation operation took place in 2013, where the team at Muon went and transported a 52 foot long magnet. Now, on one hand, it wasn't too hard to move the magnet per se, as there were various vehicles that were able to carry the bulk of its weight and such. The real issue here was going and getting it to the destination as a whole, because it wasn't as simple as driving it down the road. Rather, it had to be transported by land and sea over 3,000 miles, and it took 35 days to do so due to the restrictions that they had to get around. As for what the magnet was for, that was so it could help build a device known as the Muon G2 magnet that would help study the particle known as the muon. The muon, like its lighter sibling, the electron, acts like a spinning magnet. The parameter known as the g-factor indicates how strong the magnet is and the rate of its gyration. The value of g is slightly larger than 2, hence the name of the experiment. This difference from 2 is caused by higher order contributions from quantum field theory. In measuring G2 with high precision and comparing its value to the theoretical prediction, physicists will discover whether the experiment agrees with theory. Any deviation would point to an as yet undiscovered subatomic particle that exists in nature. Getting back to the transportation, the operation was delicate to say the least and it featured specially outfitted vehicles to help ensure that the magnet wasn't damaged, as that obviously would have ruined everything. The cost of moving it as a whole was over $20 million. Truly an epic ride, to say the least. Number 8. Shuttle Endeavor You might think that in bringing up a space shuttle, it has to mean discussing how it got to the launch pad to head into space. But that's not the case here. The Endeavour was a key part of NASA's space program, and when it was retired, it was transported to Los Angeles to go and be a part of a museum. And when it was brought to the Los Angeles International Airport, it touched down in style as it found itself flying in on the back of a Boeing 747. Yes, there was a space shuttle attached to a commercial airplane, and they landed together. But that's not the end of the story. Rather, that was the easy part. Why? Because the space shuttle had to go and get delivered to the museum, which was about 12 miles away. That's a simple trip, right? Wrong. The space shuttle had a wide length due to its wings, and even though a route had been planned to get it from the airport to the museum, it wasn't easy. In fact, hundreds of trees had to be cut down and power lines had to be shut off just so the shuttle could come through without serious issues. It took two days to get from one spot to the other. It took a fraction of that for Endeavour to get into space. Makes you think, what's harder, right? Getting out of the atmosphere or getting out from LAX airport in traffic? By the way, all jokes aside, have you ever flown through LAX airport? Did you find it to have a lot of traffic and be overcrowded? Lots of people say it's a huge, hectic hassle all the time. Tell me your thoughts in the comments section below, then remember to subscribe to The Biggest if you haven't already for more exciting videos. Number 7. Mirrors for a Telescope When it comes to telescopes, most don't think of them as massive transportation endeavors, but as in all things, it's the size that matters here. For the University of Tucson, they were making the largest mirror telescope in the world, and as a result, they had to transport not just the mirrors, but the case that would hold them and get them up a slope in order for delivery to be done. It took the various teams involved over five months just to go and plan out the trip because of the various dangers that were involved. This included the potential for harming the mirrors and thus causing massive delays for the projects. When the mirrors and base were ready, they were transported by truck at a whopping nine miles per hour. The truck itself had to be outfitted so that every wheel was powered by its own hydraulic fuel to ensure that the mirrors and base remained upright as they went and transported the device up to the summit, where the telescope would be put together. Various roads were closed or blocked off so that the mirrors and base could be driven there without impediment. 
Dennis Zaritsky, Deputy Director of the Steward Observatory, said that the University of Arizona is a key partner involved in the telescope and that they were thrilled to see such progress being made. It is incredible that we are now actually building the structure for one of mankind's signature scientific endeavors, he said. I can't wait to see what we discover with this amazing machine. Number six, Harriet gas turbine. The need for better energy creation is something the world is tackling in various ways, including General Electric going and making the biggest natural gas turbine in the world via the Harriet gas turbine. These turbines run off of natural gas, as noted, and weigh as much as a Boeing 747. But just as importantly, it has enough juice to power over 600,000 homes in an area like France. They're being used in Pennsylvania to work in power plants and provide electricity for other buildings, but getting them there wasn't an easy thing, as you likely guessed. The 800-ton engine had to be taken from its construction plant to the plant in Pennsylvania, and it was broken up in various stages to ensure that it wouldn't be delayed. This included putting it on trains, certain road convoys, and more. Not too surprisingly, people were lined up on the roads that the engine passed by because they had never seen a turbine like this before. To ensure that the turbine could be delivered on the road safely, a very special vehicle was used to handle every turn or obstacle that they might face. What's more, they did 3D models of the roads ahead of time to ensure that the vehicle and the turbine could pass over them without much issue. Number 5. Nuclear Reactor Nuclear reactors as a whole are something that most people don't think about in terms of transportation. But when they are built, it's something that many worry about, who are close to the project that is, because things can go wrong in a hurry. So imagine what it was like when the government of Saudi Arabia had to not only transport a nuclear reactor to their desired plant location, but had to do it over desert hills and winding roads. Hardly the best place to go and transport such an important device, right? The nuclear reactor didn't just have a vehicle transporting it, it had a whole convoy of vehicles that would alternate their positions based upon the kind of road that they were on. This included six in front and four in the back, or vice versa, depending on what the situation required. After this journey, the company that helped them decided to work on a future model that would allow for maximum traction and maneuverability without having to sacrifice speed and safety. While nuclear reactors will never be fully safe, it's nice to know that the transportation of them could be very safe going forward. Number four, Bagger 288. There are all sorts of mining vehicles in the world today, but none are as big and powerful and difficult to transport as the Bagger 288. When its construction was completed in 1978, Bagger 288 superseded Big Muskie as the heaviest land vehicle in the world at 13,500 tons. It took five years to design and manufacture and five years to assemble, with a total cost reaching $100 million. In 1995, it was itself superseded by the slightly heavier Bagger 293. NASA's Crawler Transporter still remains the largest self-propelled land vehicle in the world since bucket wheel excavators are powered by an external power source, and the overburdened conveyor bridge F-60s hold the title of largest land vehicle of any type by physical dimensions. Now, in terms of its epic transportation operation, it's actually not about when it was constructed. Rather, the best story is from when it had to move to another mining location in 2001. In terms of cost, it was cheaper to go and move the machine to its new location than to dismantle it, move, and then reassemble. The problem, though, was that this way of doing things wasn't just slow, it was problematic. It took 33 weeks to move the machine 14 miles. That is because the Bagger 288 had to cross things like a river, a highway, and more. They even had to level out some obstacles and plant grass in certain other areas just so that the Bagger would have an even smoother trip to its new home. Number 3. Sea Platform Troll A this unique platform is the highest transportable construction platform ever built. Technically speaking, it's 300 feet high, but it doesn't look like it when you go and view it as most of its height is underwater. Its transportation was such a feat that it set a Guinness World Record for the heaviest object transported by water to its resting location. In case you're curious, 
It is a 50 million ton construction, so getting it to the water where it needed to go was not easy at all. It took 10 towing trips to get it to where it needed to be, and then it had to be buried and then put one on top of the other. It took five days to do the entire transport, and the ships that ferried the parts had to go at an extremely slow speed as they carefully brought all the pieces in order to create this massive marine platform. Number two, Hotel Montgomery. In San Jose, California, a hotel needed something moved. Everything, that is. The Hotel Montgomery had been damaged during an earthquake that happened at the time and it was so damaged that the city intended to just destroy it and rebuild the hotel over the bones of the old one. But the mayor of San Jose didn't want that and instead wanted it moved so that it could be restored. They had a spot about 187 feet away that would allow that, but that meant they had to go and move the entire hotel to that spot. Not an easy feat. They had to use remote control machines in order to uproot the hotel and put it in its new home. The move is considered to be the fourth heaviest building ever moved. The hotel was reopened in 2004 as the Hotel Montgomery, but later rebranded to Four Points by Sheraton, now doing business as Four Points by Sheraton San Jose Downtown, where it's still open to this day. Number 1. Hoeg Target You've no doubt heard of cars and trucks from various nations being transported by vessels across the ocean in order to get to their destination. But the biggest car and truck ship in the world is that of the Hoeg Target, owned by Hoeg Auto Liners. Given its size in all directions, it's able to go and carry 8,500 vehicles in one go. This makes it very reliable and efficient to deliver big orders to various nations. What might surprise you though is that the Hoeg Target also has an engineering style that makes it environmentally friendly. That's right, it is of course a polluting ship, but it's more efficient than some of its competitors. Hopefully in time, with solar panels on the ship, it could become even less of a carbon dioxide emitter very soon. And what's even more wild is that you can track where it is at all times by simply looking up its name on Google. That's right, there are free websites out there that let you track the last known position of this incredible ship. Thanks for watching! What did you think of these transport operations over the course of history? Does it surprise you at all the ability of these shipping vehicles to go and deliver these incredible packages? Did it shock you that these operations went off seemingly without a hitch? Do you think that even bigger and grander transport operations are going to happen in the future? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time right here on The Biggest.